Welcome everyone. We'll just give people a minute here to keep joining us. Welcome everyone. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Michelle Rapp. I'm the Associate Director of Alumni Career Strategy in the Alumni Relations Office, where I organize programs such as this. And today's session is made a good choice because it's a new year and I think thinking about career advancement is natural. It's also part of a theme that we have for several programs right now called A New You, with NU being new. So I think this is a great way to kick off the year, and I'm super excited to have Sabrina Woods back with us again presenting. She's done a number of workshops with us and has strong ties to Northeastern, both as an alumna and as someone who worked in career design and knows, knows many alumni um, and always likes to come back and connect with us. So Sabrina helps people to navigate challenging career and life transitions she focuses on career and life possibilities, but also it might take the edge off of the stress in this moment. She provides a unique, holistic, and resilient approach to career change and job search. She also facilitates engaging webinars and train the trainer sessions, ranging from the Myers-Briggs to mindfulness to LinkedIn. Sabrina's background includes 20 years in the career services field, including work at Northeastern's career design office, Harvard and the University of London. And I know you're in for a good time here. So I will turn it over to Sabrina. Michelle, thank you so, so much. I am absolutely delighted to be here. Um, what a kick, because I'm I'm thinking back to a really, really long time ago when I was a student at Northeastern. And then I'm thinking also back to when I was in the Career Center. And I have a handful of former students here today. Boy, do I feel honored that they they came. Uh, I love LinkedIn. I went and searched LinkedIn and got reminded of a whole bunch of people that I'm connected to in the Northeastern community. I'm going to say one other thing. I've been doing some research on belonging lately, and I want to remind you that you belong here. That, you know, I know it's a huge community, which is really lucky when it comes to your job searches, right? And your networking. Um, but we can also create a smaller community today and feel a little more connected to one another. So again, I just want to send you this warm welcome and remind you that you belong. And I'm thrilled to be here and we're going to go ahead and dive in. Um, and I'm going to be asking you lots of questions. It's going to be a deeper session today than maybe what you would typically do. Uh, and I hope you get a lot out of it as well. So let me go ahead and jump in. You've already seen this. I'll leave this up for a moment. If we're not connected on LinkedIn and you'd like to be connected, well, you know, just grab your phone and um, you can use that QR code and jump right into my LinkedIn and connect with me because I would love to continue to grow my connection of, of my community that I know through NU. Now, to kind of prime the pump today, I want you to... Um, grab a scrap piece of paper and think about one or two small wins that you've had in the last week, two weeks. Um, and I'm going to define wins really broadly. And this whole session is about our achievements, our accomplishments to build our efficacy and confidence in our career advancement. So this is just a way to get us started. So think for a moment about something you did well or felt good about. Now, <laughs> I'm going to give you an example so that you also broaden how you define a small win. I'm going to tell you about a failure. Well, it's a partial failure, but it 
I've got two things that have given me resilience this week. I put in a proposal to the University of Liverpool in the in the UK, and I found out I didn't get it. It was going to be an in-person session. They are picking me up for an online online version, but I love international travel for work. So why I'm telling you this is that I didn't let it fester too long. So that's that bounce back is a sign of resilience. I didn't let it, I didn't let a loss or disappointment stay with me too long. I honored it, complained about it, and then I moved on. The other resilience piece is I'm on day eight of COVID um, or something like that. Last week, I had to cancel my very first webinar. Uh, It was a LinkedIn session for Harvard Medical School postdoctoral fellows. Real bummer, but I did it yesterday instead. So again, resilience for... um, my COVID, taking really good care of myself is part of resilience. Mm, That's a really good reminder, isn't it, right? So that's my theme for today is the bounce back, and I'm honoring that as a win. So when you think about your wins in the last week or two, um, remember sometimes those character traits are really solid wins as well. We're going to come back to this in a few minutes. I'm going to give you a little bit more information. I'm going to ask you another question. And then we're going to circle back to this. And we're going to go into small groups, like three people, so that you can share. I'm giving you that giving you that warm up. That's where we're headed. OK, but let's have a little fun and let me find out how you're doing. OK, and the way I'm going to ask you how you're doing is going to involve using annotate. I don't know how many of you have ever used this yet on um, Zoom, but if you go to the very top bar and you see view options, go down a little ways and you'll see annotate. See if you can turn that on right now. Oh, I may have to actually adjust something before. Let me just double check. No, it's still enabled. Okay, great. So you go to view options, annotate. Once you're there, I want you to use either the um, drawing feature or use um, the checkbox. When you see the checkbox on the side, once you're in annotate, that'll allow you to choose any kind of stamp, an X or a star, uh, or you can use the pen. And what I want you to to do is tell me how you're doing. Circle one of these smiley faces that best represents how you feel today or create your own. So I'm hoping, I don't see any actions yet, I'm hoping annotate works for others. Ah, here it goes. Okay. (laughs) So again, your invitation is to draw, doodle, access that inner five-year-old. Okay. How are you feeling? And it's also really good for us to honor. Sometimes we show up even if we're not great. And that's, we're just kind of honoring, hey, I'm sorry you don't feel well today. Or you're having a stressy day. Right. So it's just know that how you're doing matters to me. And uh, this is your chance to kind of weigh in. I do have to say, um, right down the street from Northeastern is Mass Art. And I did this with a group of students a couple of weeks back. And the drawings they did were outrageous. They were so much fun. So I realized we're not Mass Art students, but feel free to draw a smiley face if you wish. I'll give you just one more moment to check off how you're feeling or draw. And uh, hopefully this puts a little smile on your face for the start of the day. Uh, Once you're done with that, I want you to keep thinking about what is it that's been a win recently. Uh, It can be a tangible project that got completed. It can be somebody gave you a shout out, somebody sent you a thank you, or it can be something at home. We're not just talking work. Could be something in volunteer work, something with your family. So think really broadly about the small wins question. And sadly, what I'm going to do now is ask people to pause on our smiley faces. And I'm going to clear all the drawings. But I really appreciated this. And uh, then I just have to turn off the annotate so that we have that be quiet for the moment. Okay. So. Okay. Here's what today's session is going to cover. We're going to define and talk more about the concept of self-efficacy, accomplishments, which you knew already, skills and talents, and then future goals. 
Okay, where is it that you want your career to take you next? How do you want to express those talents of yours? It's going to be really helpful if you grab pen and paper, okay? Yeah, I know you can open up the Word doc and pop things in there, but I'm going to encourage, grab that printer paper, grab that scrap paper, and uh, use that for today. Uh, and then, so we're going to come back to this small wins question, and we're going to put you into breakout rooms. So once you get into breakout rooms, share your name, and... You can share what part of Northeastern you were a part of. I was part of Demore McKim. It was just called the College of Business back then. So it's good old CBA. Uh, so share your name, what part of Northeastern you were connected to. And then one thing that went well recently, you're going to be in groups of either two, uh, uh, probably about three, maybe four max or two, two to four. And uh, remember, you belong. This is your community. And so I'm inviting you to, to show up for it and listen to each other and share. So you'll have about three to four minutes. Um, and we'll, I'll check in with Michelle and see how she's doing. If you're really super not feeling well, stay in the main room. Don't leave the call, you know, just stay in the main room. Uh, if you're not feeling well, and you really can't cope with <laughs> talking to somebody else, or you could go into that room and have your video off and say, I'm so sorry, I'm just not up for being on video today. So you got options. Okay, I turn it over to Michelle okay. and have her put you in small spaces. Again, remembering these are part of your fellow community. So jumping in there and meeting a new Northeastern alum. If you've got any questions, have trouble getting in, let us know. And we'll move you around if you end up in a room by yourself. That's the other thing. Looks like so far, we've got two in each. Hey, that worked beautifully, Michelle. Fantastic. Okay, let me set my timer. Three minutes. It's short but sweet. All right. And again, don't worry if you needed to just hang out in the group room at this moment, that's totally fine. And we'll start back up in about three, four minutes. You can go heat up your coffee. I'm gonna go microwave my tea for a second. Uh, it'll help my COVID, right? <laughs> I'll be right back. And Michelle, do you have it set up for a 60 second countdown? Yeah. Okay. And uh, more people jumped in. That's great. There's only, only a handful that didn't. I love that. When I, sometimes when I ask feedback after sessions, I don't try not to take it too personally, but I'll sometimes have people say, oh yeah, I loved the interactions in the breakout rooms. Not everybody, but or small groups. I liked I liked meeting new people. I liked having that one-on-one -on -one time with someone else. So I really like that I 
have two today. It may be a little rushy at the end, but um, I think this is really important for our community. Definitely. Yeah, feels good. Okay. In about 20 seconds, we'll do the um, closing rooms. And I like the background you selected, Michelle. It's fun. It's fun, isn't it? I have no idea where I found that. I, I need to freshen it up with a new one, but I like it. I switched back and forth. But... Okay, that's our time. Let me okay. go ahead and close rooms. We have that 60 seconds. Great. Michelle is also going to ask you, is it bright enough for where I am? Because I can turn a light on overhead for my for seeing me. Yeah, maybe a little light would be good. Yeah, we do that. Yeah, that's a little better. Yes. All right. Welcome back, all. I'm guessing that was way too short, but at least you got a chance to meet one other fellow alum. And um, we're going to keep going on the presentation, but if you'd like to put into chat your small win, it's really fun to see what other people are feeling good about in the last week or two. So that's just an invitation to, at any point, drop into chat some details about your win. I'd love to, I'd love to see them. It'd be fun. Okay. Now, moving on, um, I want to start defining this phrase about high self-efficacy or self-efficacy in general. What is this thing? It's not a term that we use every day. And so I'm going to give you some sort of multiple definitions of it. What we're looking at here is your belief in your capability regarding a particular behavior. Usually it's to attain something. Uh, it's a, for a result, right? So an individual's belief in her capacity to execute behaviors necessary to produce a specific attainment or goal. So <clears throat> it's really about your confidence in your ability to control your surroundings or make things happen um, or your own, own motivation. Okay. And a really good way to think about this is this, this cute phrase, you know, <laughs> I can, or I can't. Okay. How do you see yourself, your ability to do something? So it's your per perceived that's your belief in your ability to learn, achieve, or perform something. And um, another sort of thing that is really important to bring up is the difference between self-confidence and self-efficacy is that it's really specific. Here's an example. Um, I'm a speaker. I have strong self-efficacy for delivering workshops, webinars, uh, staff retreats, day-long trainings, you know, whatever it may be. That speaker in terms of that trainer. Now, my self-efficacy is gonna be really low if you want me to speak in an improv setting. Like you want me to join an improv troupe, throw me on a stage, my, self my confidence in my perceived ability is gonna go way down, okay? So it's like, that's what we're talking about here. So it's very specific and it's future oriented. All right, hopefully that helps us kind of get it. So the philosophy I have after 20, more than 20 years in the career services field, helping people advance in their careers, right, is that by looking at and really understanding and doing a deep dive into our accomplishments, we're going to strengthen that self-efficacy. We're going to have a stronger muscle to show up in a positive uh, way about what we can tackle and achieve in the future. Okay, now I'm curious, we're going to pop up a poll. When's the last time you went about 
thinking really concretely about accomplishments, achievements, things that you've uh, done that you felt good about. So quick poll will be popped up. Maybe you do it once a year in January. Maybe you do it once a year for your annual review. When I was in the career design department, we had to do an annual review. So that's the only time I really did it. And I did it kind of because I had to. I dragged my feet. I hated that form. <laughs> Sorry, but I was a drag. It was like not eight or nine pages long. And I had to like, you know, have all this backup and, you know, but it was good for me to do that. Even if I didn't love it, it was really helpful me, for me to take stock. Wow. Okay. This is what I've done. Right. We don't do this enough. We don't do this very often. So we'll give you another moment to kind of think about that. <clears throat> okay. And how's it coming, Michelle? I is it sharing the results? I just hit share results. Oh, I haven't seen it yet. Oh, other people are seeing it. I was playing with annotate to clear something. I see Amy nodding her head. Yeah, it okay. popped up. It's it's there. So maybe you can share it with me, Michelle, since I didn't get a chance to see it. Yes. So we had 44% said within the last few months. 24% said typically once a year. 28% said it's been ages. And 4% can't remember. Okay. Okay. So we have a third of you that are like, oh, Sabrina, I have no idea, right? It's been a long, it's been ages. It's been a long time. And then there's another cohort that's doing it, hey, either within the last few months or within a year. So for some, it's you're going to be a little rusty, but for others, it's like you can do this. So we're going to keep taking this a step further. We started with some small wins, and I, I want you to continue to add those into chat. They're really fun for me to see. And then I want you to take a step further and I want you to think about your entire lifespan. And this was also a homework or pre-work assignment if you had wanted to. Three to five achievements during various times in your life. Okay. So let's have you take a moment and think about those. Um, and I'm going to give you a little more definition. In a minute, we're going to drop a handout in too, but I want to just kind of keep building this. So the important part about this exercise is that you decide it's an achievement, okay? It's very personal. So what we're doing here is in this exercise, we're later going to identify and analyze these key events, which you continue to associate with strong, positive sense of meaning or productivity or creativity or flow. Flow is that time when you lose a sense of self. It's a really good challenge level. Um, you're focused, right? That's flow. So think about the idea of personal achievement and personal accomplishment really widely. And remember that those small ones matter. The small ones really matter. Um, so yeah, so I'm going to just have you do about, you know, a minute and a half here where you're looking back at some things, you're thinking, what stands out? Big and small achievements. Take another 30 seconds and don't worry, we're going to do more of this.
Okay. That is time. I'm hoping you got some ideas and that it was kind of fun to think about these. We're going to build in a little more structure. I have done this exercise twice in my life, by the way, this achievements exercise. And it comes from a woman um, who's no longer with us named Kit Hayes. She was my career counselor when I, way back when, when I was going through a career change and I got a chance to do this exercise. Okay. So this is, this is a really personally meaningful to share this with you. So what you're going to do is you're going to take your life and you're going to divide it into three quadrants. So if you're 28, you got the age one or zero to nine, 10 to 19, 20 to 28, or rough, roughly. Okay. And so we want you to be thinking about achievements, a couple of achievements from each quadrant, because it's really common for us to just look at the past year, or, or maybe if you've been in a job for two or three years, you might look at that whole job. I want to go across the lifetime because we can then look to see what our themes are. Now, I've got some examples here so that you'll be able to see what I mean. I found it really hard personally to think about those early life ideas. But one of them, at age five, we moved in Michigan to a new city. My parents said, you can take the bus if you feel brave, or you can go in the car with us on that first day going into school. I said, I'll take the bus. Okay. It was really, you know, that was a really good achievement because I was willing to get on that bus with all these strange kids. Achievement number two on here. I was on the basketball team in high school. I'm going to be really frank with you. It sucked. I was terrible. The achievement was I stuck it out for a sense of, of perseverance and a sense of uh, I could cheer on from the bench, my teammates. So I'm really proud that I didn't quit. I stayed. That's a big achievement, not by everyday people's standards. A lot of people would be like, what are you talking about? That's not achievement. Going to state championships, that's an achievement. No, I define sticking it out as an achievement that built huge character traits in me. Number three was candy making when I was in like fifth grade. I painted these plastic molds and I sold them to my classmates. <laughs> I still can't believe that I had a little candy making business in my little, out of my desk in elementary school. And the last one, many people would call it an achievement. I went to England at age 16 through a youth exchange, Rotary Youth Exchange program for a month. Okay, so a lot of people would call that an achievement and I did too. So I'm going to give you a little more time and um, have you five minutes brainstorm to maybe it's one, maybe it's one in each of those earlier time frames and a couple in the most recent. So stretch yourself, go back, think about what is it that felt really good earlier in life. Okay, I'm going to give you a couple give you, uh, yeah, four or five minutes to do this piece. So stay with us. Don't get distracted with your phone. I know how this goes. <laughs> and let's take, let's take some time to do this one. And when you get stuck, a real powerful thing is just to notice your breath. Notice an inhale and notice an exhale. And it kind of releases that pressure gives you something else to focus on and then might allow something to drop in. So again, in between trying to think of these, notice your inhale, notice your exhale, and just relax and let it go. I know this is hard. I've done it twice now, like I said. Both times, really hard, really worthwhile. And Michelle, you can do some too if you want. <laughs> yes.
take about another 30 seconds just jotting down any idea that comes to your head. It's a brainstorm. We're just thinking, when, when are some moments where I felt personally happy about something I made happen, right? Not just the, I graduated from college or I got this award. Go deeper than that to those things that are personally meaningful. Okay, we're going to come back to these because we're going to do some analyzing and uh, you might decide to expand on this on Sunday morning with that cup of coffee or tea. Really worthwhile for us to know where we've made a difference, had an impact. Um, okay, I want you to think now, identify one of your accomplishments or achievements and ask yourself what it took to make it happen. Like when I was talking about the basketball, <laughs> being a being really lousy basketball player, um, it what it took was perseverance. It took a sort of um, setting my ego aside. It took to celebrate team uh, teamwork, uh, you know, uh, celebrate other people. Is what, so those are some of the things it took for me to do that achievement. So I want you to start thinking about how you made something happen. So the next part of this, and I'm going to have you add into chat, we're going to take apart and give you a model for how we look at skills. Does anybody know? There's three types of skills classifications or categories of skills. Does anybody have any idea what one of them might be? And if so, pop it into chat. Any guesses if we were to define skills into three buckets? <clears throat> Excuse me. Anybody want to take a crack at identifying a type of skill? And I know we've got one, at least one or two career coaches in the audience, so they were going to have a, probably a leg up because they talk skills with their clients all the time. I know Michelle already knows this, so she's not allowed to weigh in. <laughs> but Michelle, what's what's happening in chat there? Do you see any ideas? Yes, we've got hard, hard technical, soft, internal, external, leadership, functional, interpersonal, special knowledge. I love it. We're so on it. This is a great group. Okay, so... The three that I'm going to bring up are going to be, and, and I want you to make, just make a quick note on your sheet of paper, because I want you to be thinking about this when you go back to analyze your accomplishments. So some of them are technical skills. For example, resume writing would be a technical skill. It's specific to my industry. <clears throat> Whereas I used to work in, a long time ago in marketing. So another type of uh, skill there would be writing promotional copy, right? And this brings bring us to the next one. The next type of skill is transferable. In the two examples I gave you, the transferable skill is to write. So when you have the skill, a um, whole bunch of them examples, to write, to analyze, to edit, to research, to lead, to calculate, you can calculate your net worth or you can calculate your month end spending. You, you've got this transferable skill that can go into different, or I can calculate the focus group results or survey results, right? So think of transferable skills as they go across industries. You use them in different ways and you bring them with you to every job you go to. And that's a, when we're training, changing careers, we really focus on those transferable skills. What I learned here in finance, I'm gonna bring to my sustainability job, for example. So as we're looking, and analyzing your accomplishments, I want you to pull out 
knowledge-based skills, transferable skills, and personal traits. That perseverance I talked about for the basketball team would be a personal trait. The creativity that I had for designing chocolates in elementary school would probably be more of a transferable trait, but you might think of it as a personal trait. So you're adaptable, you're reliable, you're um, practical. What are, when we're looking at those past accomplishments, sometimes it's a particular trait you possess that allowed you to be successful. I think personable and down to earth are hopefully some of the traits you feel while I'm delivering this session. And I bring those into my individual coaching, but I don't leave them there. I bring them into teaching as a whole group as well, trying to be personable, down to earth. All right, now we're gonna drop into chat a handout PDF, and I want you to go ahead and open this up. It's got lots of details. I've already taken you through several parts of this, but once you get this document, you're gonna see that it asks you to divide your life into three parts, right? Just like we did. Um, have, you know, one to three accomplishments in each part of your life. And then it's gonna ask you to start to pull it apart and even put it on a chart. You may wanna grab a scrap piece of paper and um, it's gonna, oh, I, oh, there we go. You could uh, put some columns, the name of the accomplishment, and then it's gonna ask you to list the skills. And you'll see loads of examples from my life. Uh, and then the last column is rewards. Skills and rewards. So I got on the school bus. What did that take? It took me being a little bit outgoing. And it took me being brave or courageous. Rewards are going to be different for every single person. And I think it's really worthwhile, even if we, we're not going to spend a huge amount of time on rewards today, um, it's the why you do something. Um, I might, Michelle and I might run an event together. And my reward might be this fact that I got to meet 20 new people. Michelle might say the reward for her was she had a number of small conversations where she heard that people really loved the event. And so she had a different, a different uh, reward. Mine was, oh, quantity of people. I've got all these LinkedIn connections. And hers was a couple of really good conversations. We do things for different reasons. It's getting at that why. Do I have that book on the shelf? Um, I think it's Simon Sinek. Find your why. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm getting at this. Find your why. Our rewards are going to be different for each person. So... We're gonna give you three or four minutes, take one or two, maybe three or four of your accomplishments and tease out the skills and the rewards. You got loads of examples from me. You know my whole life story here. So it'll help you see when you do this in depth, you get a chance to start to see patterns, all right? so. I'm going to be quiet again, which you know is hard for me, but I'm going to give you three, four minutes. I'm going to give you three minutes. And I, because I want to have you also have time to chat in the small groups. And we're going to do one more reflection exercise before we wrap up uh, at one. Okay. So again, I'll be quiet for the next three minutes. See if you can tease out a couple of your skills and rewards. See what you discover.
and take about another 30 seconds. Keeping in mind today is to get the process started. Might need more time than this. Took me a while to do this exercise. I picked it up a few times over a couple of different days. That's what was helpful to me. All right, what we're gonna do now, I know you need more time, I recognize that. Um, you're invited to, if you feel like it, you can add some skills or some more rewards into chat, or we can do it actually when we get back out from breakout. In fact, let's do that, we'll wait. So let's see if you can identify one of those accomplishments or think about your general discoveries as you just began working on this, this exercise today. Identifying accomplishments, skills, and rewards. And so we'll put you back in breakout rooms for about four minutes. Um, and Michelle, I don't know if they're going to be the same or if they're going to be different. They might be different. They might be different. Okay, so when you go in, uh, share your name, which part of Northeastern you were part of. <clears throat> and then what you really have to do is you might have to set a timer for yourself. If you've got three people in your group, you're going to literally only want to go about you know, 30 to 40 seconds each. It's just important, you know, that we all get a chance to share. So we'll open up breakout rooms. If you have the ability to turn camera on, that's super nice. It's also okay if you can't today, just keep that in mind. Really important to take care of yourself. We're really glad you're here. That's the most important thing. Okay, um, one accomplishment or general discoveries. Go ahead and jump into breakout room and I'll set my timer for about three minutes. If you have any questions, stay and hang out. Remember again, just like before, if you're not able to join a group right now, it's okay. Just stay in this group and uh, keep working on your document. Oh, a bunch of rooms only have two people per room. Michelle, instead of three to four. Uh, yeah. um... So we could move some around. I'm gonna go ahead and move Madison into room okay. nine. So I'm working backwards. I'm going to move Madison to room nine to get rid of room 10. Unless Christopher Jewett, are you planning to join? Okay, I'm going to assume that he's not. I'll move her to nine. And got rid of room 10 that way. Okay, you got rid of room eight. Perfect. Oh, you moved. No, oh, Madison's a nine now. Okay, great. Everybody else good? Let's see here. All right. Michael's in a room by himself. Do we have any room? I'll move Michael to room seven. Yeah. Unless you're moving to Michael. No. Okay. I'm getting rid of room four altogether, just in case. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to set my timer. <clears throat> How are we doing? So, it's uh, 1249. Oh, I'm at, everybody's in a room with somebody. Okay, yeah, we're good. <laughs> yeah, we're doing okay. We have a short little reflection exercise. Well, um, you know, I'd be interested in your being able to take questions from people because I think sometimes people are wondering what yeah. to do with all of this and, yeah, you know. Okay. Um, yeah, we'll do a reflection exercise that'll take like three, just a cute couple of minutes and okay. questions. And I can also stick... Are you able to stick around past one o'clock for additional yes. questions? Yep. Perfect. Good. Wonderful. Okay. And yeah.
when I get to the 30 second, I'm at the one minute mark. When I get to the 30 second mark, we'll just shut the rooms. So I'm cutting it by 30 seconds. Great. Yeah. And I'll often do a message, even though they see it, I'll say room shutting. I'm just going to say that rooms closing one minute left, and then you can go ahead and close rooms. Great. I was thinking about what color is your parachute when you said types of skills, because I think he has it like information, people, objects or. Oh, I'm not sure what that third one is. I'm thinking like people, information, working with things. Maybe it's things. Things, data. Yeah, people. Love that. Things, data, people. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, for those of you that are back already, um, grab your paper because we're going to do a short reflection exercise. And then we'll have a group conversation in just a few minutes. All right, welcome back, everybody. I hope that was interesting and nice to meet new people. Um, what we're doing, I'd love to hear how those groups went, but we're going to talk and as a whole group after a short reflection exercise, and we'll take Q&A then. Michelle and I are gonna stick around past one o'clock if anybody wants to kind of process a bit more. It's so hard for me to do this in an hour. I love it when I have an hour and a half, but you know, lunch breaks, we gotta, <laughs> we gotta try and uh, be cognizant of a typical work day. So grab that pad of paper and pen. We're gonna pause and think about where you wanna go next. And I have this lovely phrase I call your best possible future self that lets go of um, how you're going to get there. It lets go of being afraid of taking a different step. It, it lets go of, um, it, you know, any kind of society's view on something just with a bit of freedom. I want you to think about your best possible future self. To get there, I want to do a couple of deep breaths because I'm transitioning you out of accomplishments into future. What's next? Breath work is really helpful for us to change gears and get our get our minds back into this new space. So the shape that you're going to see in just a second will allow you to do a deep inhale and a slow exhale. I hope you'll join me just to give yourself some space before you brainstorm about your best possible future self. Here we go. Deep breath in. Exhale, two, three, all right, keep those deep breaths going and brainstorm. <clears throat> idealistically, in a dreamlike way, what would your best possible self look like? Write down anything that comes to mind. It could be a company, a job title, a skill, a way you add value in the world. Take a moment. This is a fast exercise. I'm going to ask you a couple different questions, and you're just writing down anything that comes up. Another way to ask yourself the question is, where do you want to advance to? Where do you want your path to take you? Where do you want to advance to? What comes to mind? Ask yourself, what are you doing in that dream job? What are you doing in that future amazing work? 
So what I'm asking you is, what are the skills? What are you doing each day? What are those talents or capacities that you're tapping into? That you love using, brings you joy. I love coaching. I love facilitating. I love designing new programs. That's one of my sweet spots. A couple of my sweet spots. What are yours? Write down anything that comes to mind. When are you at your best? What are you actually doing? You might also think about when you're in flow state. Flow is focused. You're immersed, so you lose track of time. You feel challenged, but not so, so hard that you're defeated. But there is a level of challenge. And you've heard this phrase before. Sometimes people talk about runner's high having that, that flow state. So think about when are you in flow? When do you feel really good? And your phone can go off and you don't pay attention because you're immersed. You're focused, you're challenged, you lose a sense of self and time, and you're intrinsically motivated. You like it. And the last question you get to ask yourself is, what do you want to be known for? What do you want to be known for? Take 10 more seconds to think about that. Remember today is about priming future work. You can continue to work on this. But how do you want people to see you and know you? So what we're doing here now is we're kind of looking at and we'll have a conversation for a few minutes and kind of talk about what you might do from here. But what might stand out from these exercises? Are there any themes or skills and talents you want to use more of? But what you have now, I'm going to take you through the rest of these slides real quick and then we'll come back to the discussion. <clears throat> for those that can't stick around, I want to be really careful about making sure I end on time. And then we're going to stick around to the have that group discussion. But the whole point of why we want you to really go deep into past accomplishments and achievements, analyzing the skills, is that now you've got that self-efficacy, right? You've got your grounded to help you have these conversations with your boss. When we're talking about our um, reason to be promoted to the next level, we need to back it up with stories. We need to share examples. Now you've got a few more in your toolkit. This is how we convince people. This is how we bring to life that we're capable is by our stories, our examples. So this will all help, also help you when you go to your next networking event or you're doing an informational interview. You might end up sharing a story while you're interviewing someone for an informational interview. It'll help you obviously in future interviews. Every, I'm, I'm a coach. I help people with major career transitions. I have everybody analyze the job description and then come up with like key things for the job and then five stories that support five elements of that job. Now you're going to have a head start. In general, you'll have more confidence in the job search and in your work. So whatever stage you're at, the more we can remember our past accomplishments in all these different categories, the stronger and more comfortable we are moving forward, asking for those next projects even at work, okay? And um, I have a couple of other, sorry, two more slides, and then we'll do the group conversation. We'll also let people go that need to jump into a one o'clock meeting Eastern time. Um, I want to talk about bias in the workplace for just a second. In this visual that came from Jen Tardy, what's the matter? It's the same distance. I want to honor the fact that it's not the same distance or is, but there's all these other obstacles that are in the way for individuals that come from historically underrepresented populations or marginalized populations. Uh, Jen Tardy has done an amazing job writing about Kaisha meets the hiring system. And we're going to drop this in to chat. This is great piece for everyone to read, every single person in this call. And then she runs a group, a safe space for untapped voices to navigate their next career move. It's under construction, but I know she's rebuilding it. So just know that we're going to drop that into chat too. Okay. And then we've kind of just said this last bit. 
you're advocating for yourself because you're more clear. You're taking on projects that are aligned with your gifts that you love to do. You land more often in flow state after you've done these kind of exercises. You possess greater self-efficacy and this ultimately supports your advancement. Okay, that was a lot. I squeezed a little at the end. Um, I'm gonna go back to that conversation. I'm gonna officially, actually I'm gonna do stop share. I'm gonna officially close us so you feel like you can get onto your next thing because it's 102. And I'm sticking around and Michelle's gonna stick around for the next, I don't know, five, eight, 10 minutes. I'm not sure how long she has, but I have 10 minutes, no problem. My energy's still here because you feed me because you're here today with me. I want to find out from you and you can put into chat um, what, if any, discoveries you've made. Was there this one accomplishment that you'd forgotten about and you re-remembered? Was there an interesting kind of like, aha, when you started thinking about the rewards? What was this like for you? Anybody want to, uh, you can do a raise your hand feature that's under reactions. And then you can speak with us. So nice to just hear your voice and hear how you're doing. Uh, or you can put it into chat. What was this like for you? This helped me make a major career change when I left the world of marketing. This exercise was pivotal, pivotal in helping me make the decision to go from holistic, excuse me, to go from corporate marketing to graduate student holistic counseling. So I made a humongous shift because of some things that I recognized. I knew I was going to go to grad school, but this really helped me figure out where to go because I saw some themes and it helped me again later in life. I brought this tool to um, Harvard School of Public Health and did it for our team. And uh, redoing it helped me discover some new things about myself. What about for you? I'll turn it over to Michelle to see if anything's popping up in chat. And she's on mute, so I'll just say, yeah. Uh, Michael says, this helped me gain, great, gain greater clarity on what I want for my future self. Mm, I love that. Andrea says, I realized that as I got older, the rewards for me were more related to pride of accomplishment and helping others. Ah, gosh, yes. This is a really good point you're making, Andrea, that we switch, not switch, we shift gears over time for what feels rewarding. Our earlier self might have said something different and might have needed something different for rewards, right? Yeah, that's really great. I think the rewards part is very infrequently spoken about. Analyzing that it's not just about money. It's not just about a shout out in a team meeting. There's lots of different ways that we take in rewards. And I just want to speak, yeah, come on. Amy says she can see threads of skills throughout my life, even as a teenager. I love that. So the Amy earlier on, oh, wow, that was there then. I could see that when I was a teenager. And I still am proud of that strength or I still use that strength. And that's like we're identifying natural talents that were just part of us and that we've nurtured over the years. I love that. Anybody else? We still got two or three more minutes. What do you think? And Christina says, I realize my rewards are emotional, feelings I didn't get enough in childhood. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. And uh, I'll say I'm reading an interesting book. Well, <laughs> the book is okay, but the premise is what's most interesting. And it's called The Five Languages of Appreciation in Work um, by Gary Chapman and Paul White. It's based on the five love languages uh, author. So, you know, you might think, What's important for me in, in work? For some people, it's the, you know, like a financial, and for others, it's words of appreciation. For others, it's words of service or acts of service. You know, there's different ways in which we we like to be appreciated. So, so that's an interesting one to look at. All right. And Michael also asked, how do we best incorporate these reflections on our careers into our LinkedIn profiles? <laughs> Michael. Um so there's so many different places, really tangible, the skills that you might identify, whether they're the personal traits, the transferable skills or the knowledge base can go into the actual skills section of LinkedIn. In the about section, you can tell some vignettes. 
you can tell a micro story that might bring to life some of the skills that are really important to you to have in your next job. And lastly, I never look at LinkedIn as a summary of your past. I want you to be that museum curator. I want you to curate the content, especially from these accomplishments, that are going to help leverage your future. I want you to be really idealistic. Oh, I someday want to be the VP of blank. Oh, I someday want to be this book author and published. And so you take what's your goal, and I want you to share the stories and the skills that are going to bring you there. If you look at my LinkedIn profile, you won't see the word resume, cover letter, or even interviewing. What? I'm a career coach. <laughs> the reason those aren't in my about section on LinkedIn is instead it says that I run day-long retreats. I'm an international LinkedIn trainer. I'm a holistic coach. I'm emphasizing the holistic and the deeper work as opposed to the stuff that I still do all the time for my career coaching clients. But I want to put out there to the universe, I know it's kind of a holistic term, what it is that I want more of. And that's why that LinkedIn is really future focused and really focused on those things. I hope that helps. Any more comments or questions? I see another. Yes. Um, Sarah asks, what would you recommend a next step be for someone like me who doesn't see any patterns, no aha moments from these stories? I worked through what colors your parachute, which had similar exercises to what we did today. And I still feel very lost and unsure about what I want my want, what my skills are. Okay. So I, I did this, you know, to get to here, I did this on a couple of different occasions. You may have to go back to even more examples in order to find a pattern. Um, so instead of having, you might have to have five examples from each third of your life in order to start to see some threads. And it took me a while staring at mine. And I finally came up with the word pioneering. I really love it when I'm doing something edgy that hasn't been done before. So it took me a while to look at it. The other thing, part two, you might be able to do, especially after you have a few more, is you might be able to ask a friend or a colleague, can you look at this with me? What do you see as trends? Can we talk this out? Sometimes we're still stuck in our own experience that it's hard for us to see. And I think it's really nice when someone knows as well to have their help along the journey to kind of say, oh, you mean you don't even realize? I, I did a speaker's reel recently and a, a dear friend of mine gave me a video testimonial during it. And she said, Sabrina's superpower is she helps everyone even in their seminars, feel like they matter. I had no idea. I never used that terminology. I never, I didn't know it. It took someone outside of me who saw that in me to be able to share it. It was so meaningful. So you might have to ask three friends, what do you see as my talents? How do I show up and how do I shine? I know it's a little uncomfortable to ask, but so worthwhile. So go for it. All right. Any last, any last ones before we wrap up? Okay, I want to close by saying again, you're part of this community and I hope you'll connect, uh, continue to connect with Michelle as she leads amazing programming here and feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn. And um, I hope this is the kickoff to some uh, really good work that you do to help you get to that best possible future self. So. Thank you again for being here. Thank you so much, Sabrina. This is these exercises are very powerful. They may seem simple on the surface, but um, keep keep working with it. Um, keep developing it to see what it points you to. Um, thank you, Sabrina, for um, getting us to really think about important things and to that you created community with us. And thank all of you for showing up today.